Wearable computing, in 2030, a decade from now, I, I really don't believe most of us will primarily be using our mobile phones. I uh -huh. believe that we will mainstream wearable computers. So right now, and since 2010, I've been wearing cameras on me in some form, right? Strapping them to my head or my body or whatever. And this experience is getting more and more interesting. The idea that our entire touch point with technology is gonna be augmented reality. We're gonna have information in our foreground and we're gonna be able to see a far more interesting world. This will be a complete shift in like any of our day-to-day -day lives then. Yeah, totally. I mean, right now, what do we, how do we engage with technology? We use a keyboard and type, maybe we, we look use down a touch on our screen phones iPad, all we the look time. down on our phone or we film through it. Now we're gonna be looking out at the world, we're gonna have more information. I might be able to look at you and see your LinkedIn profile and your bio and all of that yeah. kind of stuff. A lot of what I'm talking about here is not the future. I'm not talking about some like abstract idea that's going to happen. Augmented reality is already a reality. Have you worn like face filters and that kind of stuff before? Yeah, and even and even today, you're wearing like the, the new specs, the new right. spectacles? Right, so I'm wearing the V3 spectacles. And these have got two cameras. These are one heavy on though. But it's got a lot of interesting technology in it. It's okay, able so tell to me what you're wearing on your depth. face, because a lot of people are wondering when they see you walking around like this, what is this guy right. so hiding behind? Right, so I press this behind. button and I take little videos and you got little flashing lights to see I'm recording. And because I've got two cameras, I'm able to create or capture depth. So I understand where you are and the camera also understands where the background is. Mm -hmm. Cameras need to be able to do that if they're gonna help make sense of our world. They need yes. to understand what's in our world so that we can interact with that world. And I think that's really exciting that now we're starting to see wearable cameras that understand depth. And how, how does this like improve your day-to-day -day life? Well, for one, my Snapchat stories are infinitely more interesting. <laughs> right? I guess because so. Because when you are starting to capture this depth information, you're able to put augmented reality lenses on top of your world. So I can have fish that are kind of like, I can have fish floating around you. I can have confetti falling from the sky. I can really create more interesting landscapes. And I think that's an interesting way to get into the augmented reality conversation, which is through a creative and playful realm. It always starts as playful, it right? It always starts as playful. That's how you get into culture, right? But I think we're going to start to see more and more utilities. I think that we're very soon going to see augmented reality wearable experiences on our face that will show us uh, directions to get to a place. That will show us notifications for our emails. Uh, that will really provide a lot more information. So yes, for now, it can be seen as like cartoony or gimmicky or playful, but behind that is incredibly powerful technology that's going to drastically improve our lives. And then coming back to the subject of the future of technology, what do you think th these spectacles will mean for a journalist? I think it's going to be a really interesting world where you're going to have billions of people wearing augmented reality camera glasses, mm -hmm. capturing their world, which is going to give journalists more angles and more perspectives than ever before. I think with all of this amazing data and all of this amazing content that's going to be created, we're effectively going to be able to create amazing 3D maps of the world as well, which is going to help us virtually place into any landscape we want. So the future of journalism is really exciting, but all of this user-generated content that's going to be created from people with wearable devices doesn't make journalists or editors less relevant. It makes them more relevant. We're going to need good... Someone to filter out yeah. all that information for well, us. Just to help make sense of it. To help uh -huh. in all of this great amount of content that's going to come through and, and frankly what could be seen as noise. We're going to need journalists and editors to help work out what's real and what isn't. To help uh, work out what the important stories are that should be told. So I don't see any of this technology as a threat to established news and media practices. Mm -hmm. If anything, it's just gonna make journalism better. And I sense that when I scroll through my timeline, there's like so much stuff mm -hmm. that I have to keep track with. How will like, will this not like blur our vision of the world more? Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, even at this conference, there's been talk about news fatigue, there's been uh, talk about sort of information overload and yeah. kind of being saturated by content and frankly, often poor quality content. Having said that, I think having access to the right content at the right time can majorly improve your life. Uh, I want content that's gonna tell me exactly what time the bus is gonna come and where it's gonna stop. Yeah. That's useful content. But to get to that useful content, we need lots of data sets. We need lots and lots of information. So I think we're gonna get better and better at, 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 at platforms determining what is and isn't relevant and what kind of stuff we would be interested uh -huh. in. And invariably, we're gonna move towards higher quality content, which is great for everyone. Yeah, better for everyone. I hope so for my timeline as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, how do the average, how do the average viewers and consumers prepare for this future, for this wearable future? To prepare for this wearable augmented future of tomorrow, we need to start building augmented reality effects today. So already there are hundreds of thousands of augmented reality lenses that are being created, right? On platforms like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, where yeah. you can make face filters. The Instagram filters are really taking over my feet as well. They're taking yeah. over your feet. And I, and, I, and I think that that is the gateway to wearable technology. 
that is the development of the software and the operating system that is built through the camera when okay. we start scanning things as opposed to typing things. Uh, so, in order to prepare for the wearable feature of tomorrow, get involved in augmented reality lenses it today. It starts with like the digital tears on your face that you use exactly, in the Instagram lens. Exactly, that virtual mm -hmm. makeup and the stuff that, it, yeah, exactly. It, it, that is the, 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 the entry point. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you most excited about, about the future of media? What am I most excited about the future of media? I'm excited about global stories that bring people together. Yeah. I'm excited about a world that is less echo chamber focused, where we all live on complete opposite ends of the uh, online spectrum and we don't have conversations. I'm excited about virtual worlds and augmented worlds where I can meet people from other parts of the world that I would have never met before and have real conversations with them and understand their story. I'm also really excited about immersive storytelling. So right now we're shooting a documentary entirely with uh, spectacles and we're putting them on the faces mm -hmm. of young kids that have limb differences or traumatic, traumatic amputations. Mm -hmm. So kids that have, uh, for example, uh, a kid who lost her legs in a lawnmower accident and is now becoming a runner, a really fast runner. And how do or, the spectacles help you in telling their stories? Because we're able to put spectacles on their face and tell the story through their eyes. For the longest of time, film and media, like it is right now, is a camera facing into us, right? So it's pointing at us. Yeah. Now we're, and they are kind of in control as the directors, as the producers, determining what shot we see. Now we're putting the camera on the subject, decentralizing the storytelling process, and the subject is pointing out at the world. And when we watch that experience of somebody with a limb difference or amputation through their eyes, we really walk a mile in their shoes. And when we put on a kind of like cardboard headset and we watch that experience in here, you literally feel like you're in that person's eyes. And I really believe that those kinds of stories will bring people together. You will empathize and understand people's lives in a different way when you can walk in their shoes. Okay, so it's about physically walking in somebody else's shoes, telling stories from different perspectives. Then we understand each other's perspectives. I'm just taking notes here for the future yeah. of my job as well. <laughs> I think that's when we start to understand each other's perspectives. When we can walk in each other's shoes, when we can live each other's lives, when we can really understand what the world looks like from your vantage point, Thanks. with your voice. I love, I love the quickness at which you think. Thank you for that. Now, to run off the conversation, the last thing I want to ask you is, what was the last time that technology really got into the way of your day-to-day -day life? When is the last time technology yeah. got into the When was the, the last time that you cursed at the glasses or at your phone? Or technology uh, is, is frustrating to me on a daily basis. I was sending, the fact is, we are in 2019, and we still don't have good connectivity in the world. Nope. I was at my hotel sending not very much, like two gigs of files to London. And the hotel Wi-Fi last night just would not go. To the extent that at 11.50, I had to run down the road to the local coffee shop. And I know you're thinking coffee shop in the Netherlands means smoking, but I wasn't there to smoke. I was there to get onto somebody's hotspot to be able to send a file. So in answer to your question about how technology frustrates me, the lack of connectivity in the world makes me have to do ridiculous things to get my content out on a daily basis. And it makes me incredibly excited about 5G internet. Exactly. I think 5G, this kind of speeds that are faster than we're able to consume, instantly transferring files, is one of the elements or cogs that have to come into place for us to reach this augmented reality world, right? We need the ability to rapidly transmit data really quickly. Yeah. And of course, someone who's so, so quick as you, the answer is you need more speed. You need more speed. <laughs> and, 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 and as we've been discussing at, the, at, at this conference, Artificial intelligence is going to provide us with even more speed, right? Perfect. It, it's not just having a display on your face, but it's also being able to access the right information at the right time. So at this intersection of 5G internet, artificial intelligence, and augmented reality, I think the human race is going to progress in ways like we have never seen before. Okay. Well, Yusuf, how do we keep following you? You can find myself personally at Yusuf Omar SA on all of the platforms and if you want to see the stories that we do at hashtag our stories where we reach up to 7 million people a day uh, search us out we're on Snapchat primarily but we're on Instagram Facebook everywhere else as well Yusuf, th thanks a bunch man thank you bro it's always good talking to you yes see ya